Hey YouTube, Easy Builds here, making gaming easy for you. Thank you for joining me on my first build video. Today I'll be converting my girlfriend and her son from PS4 console gamers to the big leagues by building an AMD X570 Ryzen 3rd generation 1440p family gaming computer for just under 2200 US dollars at time of building. Once they experience gaming on this rig, PlayStation 4 will be a joke to them. If you're looking to play 2020's top titles on 1440p max settings, this may be the build for you. As we're building, I'll be going over the parts I'm using and why I chose them. This thing will average 100 plus frames on just about any game you throw at it on stock speeds without even breaking a sweat, giving you smooth gameplay and plenty of room for upgrading in the future. Computer building is pretty universal, so if you already have your own parts, go ahead and build along with me. If you want to use my parts, I'll drop a link with prices in the description below. If you already know how to build, go ahead and skip to the benchmarks in the light show. But if you're new or anything like me and just love seeing what people put in their own personal gaming rigs, then stand by and I hope you enjoy. The only tools you'll be needing is a magnetic screwdriver, a wire cutter, a static leash to keep yourself grounded, some zip ties for cable management, and a magnetic tray to keep your screws organized. If you don't have one of these, you can use a cup. The first part we'll be going over is the motherboard. I chose Asus ROG Strix X570E. I picked an X570 because this board can take all the upgrades I have planned for it in the future. It was also on sale for $279.99 US dollars at time of purchase. That's a really good deal for a motherboard with features like this. Take your motherboard out of its static protection bag and place it on its box. The next part we'll be going over is the processor. I chose Ryzen 5 3600X. This processor will have plenty of power to get the job done until I upgrade to Ryzen 9 in the future. After that, I'll pass this one down to my girlfriend's first gaming computer. I chose this processor because it was on sale for $179. 99 US dollars at time of purchase. When installing your CPU, just look for the arrow on the front or the back side of the processor. Match the arrow on your processor with the arrow on your motherboard's CPU socket. Once you've located both arrows, lift the lever and gently place the CPU into its socket. Be very careful not to bend the pins. Once your processor is installed properly, secure it to the motherboard by closing the lever. I'll be using an IC graphite thermal pad instead of traditional thermal paste. The 40x40 40 40 thermal pad was just a little too big for my Ryzen processor, so I had to make a few adjustments. I cut the thermal pad so that there's no hangover. You don't want these things touching your motherboard while there's power to it. These things are conductive. If you're going to use an aftermarket cooler like I am, you're going to have to remove these stock mountings. If you're going to use the stock cooler, leave these here and follow the instructions on how to install. For my CPU cooler, I went with MSI Core Frogger L. I'm going to be honest with you, I only picked this one because I like the way it looks. It's going to match the Umbrella Corporation color theme I have going for this build. I will name her the G-Virus. I have never used this cooler before, so I'm not going to try to teach you how to do something I don't know how to do myself. Just follow instructions on how to install whatever cooler you decided on, and don't forget your thermal pad or paste. Secure your CPU cooler to the motherboard using a proper torque pattern, then plug it into the pin labeled CPU Fan 1. Otherwise, you'll get a boot error. Now that our cooler is installed, it's time to move on to the next step, NVMe for our operating system. Remove the chipset cover and the heatsink to gain access to your M.2 socket. For my operating system, I got myself a 500 gig 970 EVO Plus.
Gently place your NVMe into the exposed M.2 socket. Give it a little push and it should slide right in. Don't forget to install your standoff for your NVMe. Push down and screw it into that standoff you just installed. Remove the plastic off the thermal pad on your heat sink before putting it back on. You could reinstall the heat sink now but leave the chipset cover off. You're going to need this hole over here to secure your motherboard to the tower later on. For my RAM I went with 16 gigs of Trident Z Royal CL16 3600 MHz Samsung BDI. I had to pick a 3600 kit to pair with my third generation Ryzen for maximum performance. I picked this RAM kit because it was on my qualified vendor list. It's Samsung BDI and it's going to match the color theme I have going for this build. Install your RAM in the proper dual or quad channel formation according to your motherboard. This will assure maximum performance. I'll be using the second and fourth channel for mine. Open the brackets, place your RAM into the open slot and push down firmly on both sides until you hear a click. Follow the last step with the remainder of your RAM. I could have got a cheaper 32 gig kit of Hynix or Micron, but I'd rather have faster RAM and upgrade in the future. Now it's time to prepare our case. Remove all the side panels and place them somewhere safe. I chose Lee and Lee's O11 Dynamic. I chose this case because I have plans for a custom water loop in the future, and that's what this case is made for. It'll also do a great job for air cooling until then. Locate and remove the box of hardware before placing your motherboard into the case. Match the eight holes on your motherboard with the standoffs on your case. Mine came pre-installed. Make sure to install your I.O. shield into the tower before your motherboard. I can't show you this process because mine came pre-installed. Screw your motherboard into all eight standoffs and don't forget about the one hiding over there by the heatsink. Once your motherboard is secure to the tower, you can go ahead and reapply that chipset cover. I'll be using 9 Azahorse S001 case fans. These RGB fans aren't for everyone, but I think they'll look really good in this case, paired up with that Trident Z Royal. Plug your case into the motherboard before installing your fans. As you can see, there's not a lot of room to work with once the fans are installed. Most of these plugs only fit in one spot, so it's pretty simple. If you run into any trouble, just check the user manual for your motherboard. When installing your case fans, make sure you have the air flowing in the proper direction. I ran into some trouble installing my fans and I was only able to use 8. This huge bulky front panel tower cord was blocking one of my fans. I ended up installing 5 intake fans instead of 6. 3 on the side and 2 on the bottom. 3 exhaust fans on the top and the CPU fan will also be exhausting out the back. The idea is to have positive airflow. Let's take a small break and say hi to our mascot, Pup Pup. Pup, come here. Wanna say hi to the camera? Our power supply is a 750 watt ROG Strix fully modular 80 plus gold. Power supplies are really easy to install. Just put the fan facing the exhaust of your case and screw in all four screws. I labeled my fan plugs so I don't get confused when plugging them into my hub. All hubs are different. Mine came with a Molex, a 3-pin ARGB, and a 4-pin fan plug. Plug your Molex into the power supply and the other two into the proper locations on your motherboard. I got some link up cable extensions to keep my color theme going. Red, black, chrome, and white. I'll be removing this drive cage because I won't be needing it. And no offense to Durbar, but I won't be needing an extra power supply today either. The first thing I normally plug into my power supply is the 24 pin motherboard plug, followed by the 8 pin CPU plug. 
And now for the highlight of the show and the most important part of any gamer's rig, the video card. I chose MSI 2080 Super Gaming X Trio. I picked MSI over its competitors because it simply had the best reviews of all the 2080 Supers on the market. I'll upgrade to a better video card in the future when I add my water loop, but this will do for now. Remove the top two covers exposing the top PCIe slot. If you're going to install this sag bar, then remove the other top two screws, but leave the covers there. Open the bracket for the top PCIe slot and place your video card inside. Apply pressure evenly to make sure it's all the way in, then secure it to the case very tightly. Once your GPU is secure to the case, plug it into the power supply. The last thing we will be installing is one terabyte 860 QVO SSD. Mount your SSD on the case in the proper location and plug the Molex into the power supply and the SATA into your motherboard. Double check to make sure all your plugs are connected to your parts before hooking your power supply up to the wall. You should have a 24 pin plug going to your motherboard, two 8 pin plugs going to your graphics card depending on which one you have and an 8 pin plus 4 pin going to your processor. I'll only use the 8 pin though because this processor does not need that much power. Alright, that's it. We're all done. Let's take a step back and enjoy the masterpiece you just created. Plug your power supply into the wall and hook this B-step to a compatible monitor. You're going to want a 1440p, 144Hz, 1 millisecond response time. The monitor I chose was MAG321 CQR. The price of this monitor was not included in the price mentioned before. All of our cords are hooked up and our monitors plugged in. Now it's time to turn her on and install Windows. You're going to need a USB copy of Windows 10. Put your Windows USB into the computer and turn it on. It should bring you to this screen. You're going to need to pick 32-bit or 64-bit. Next it will bring you to this screen asking your language preference. Select your language and hit next, then push install now. Now it's going to ask you for a product key. If you don't have a product key, make sure you're not connected to the internet and select I don't have a key. You will have to get one later on though that matches the windows you installed. Select custom install then find the driver you want your operating system on. Mine is my 500 gig NVMe. That's it for Windows. Your computer is going to restart a few times, but we're not finished yet. Now that we made it to our desktop, let's check to make sure all of our drivers are allocated. Go to the Start menu and type in Hard Disk, then select the Disk Management. If one of your drivers is blacked out, that means it's not allocated. Right click it, go to New Simple Value, and follow steps on how to allocate the driver. Now that our drivers are all allocated, it's time to download the software for our video card. Visit the manufacturer for your GPU and go to Service, Graphics Cards, and Downloads. Just pick your graphics card and download the necessary software. You can also register your product here. Once the software for your graphics card is installed, you're going to want to install the software for your motherboard. Visit the manufacturer website for your motherboard and follow the same steps as the graphics card. Only this time you're going to have a few more downloads to do. Download all the necessary software for your motherboard and you can also update your BIOS if you choose to. After installing all your software, restart your computer. Restart your computer one more time, only this time smash that F2 key. You want to go into BIOS. We're going to go check to make sure that all of our parts are running at their advertised speeds. This is the main page for your BIOS. You're going to want to go to AI Tweaker and in the AI Overclock Tuner option, you want to make sure it's set to DOCP mode. This is equivalent to XMP, but for the Asus motherboard. This will make sure that your RAM is running at its advertised speeds.
Since I have an 11 year old playing on this computer, I don't want to do any overclocking that requires monitoring. Summer is right around the corner and I just don't think it's a good idea. We are going to do Easy Tuning Wizard. Push F11 and follow the steps for Easy Tuning Wizard. I did this once before with tower cooling and received a 5% boost. Then I did it again just to test it on box cooling and received an additional 2% boost, totaling 7% boost increase in the processor's performance. Save, exit, and restart. Now that we know all of our parts are running at their advertised speeds, let's do some tests. Visit www.userbenchmark.com and download the User Benchmark application. It's best to run User Benchmark before downloading Steam or Epic Games if you are going to do this on stock speeds. Any background distraction will affect your GPU performance. This bench test will compare your parts with others who have the same parts. This computer scored a 117 gaming, 135 desktop, and 108 workstation. I'd say that's pretty good. It says the processor is running a bit slower than others who have this processor. I have the same message with the graphics card. This tells us we have a little room for improvement. The NVMe and the SSD both got decent scores. Moving along to the RAM, as you can see I'm one of the only idiots running this stuff at stock speeds. We will have to change that later on, but that will be another episode. Samsung b is an extremely stable overclocking RAM, and that's why I chose it. Now that we have some pretty good test results on paper, let's get some real-time gaming action in. When downloading Steam or Epic Games, make sure to change your download folder to your dedicated game drive. This concludes our video for today. If you liked anything, learned anything, want to build this computer, or just want to see more of Pup Pup, let me know in the comments below. Give me a like and a subscribe, and I'll get started on useful videos right away. Don't leave yet, there's still a real-time gaming benchmark and a light show. If you're not a fan of RGBs, I would suggest skipping the light show. You will be able to see these RGBs from space. Until next time, game on YouTube. Claire! Hold on! I'll be right there! Okay! Claire! It's so nice to see you. How are you doing? That helicopter just came out yeah. of nowhere. I'm in one piece. I'm guessing you don't have a key in one of those fancy pockets? Uh, unfortunately, no. Mm. But how are you doing? You know, just surviving. That's good. Yeah. Any luck with your brother? No, not yet. Claire, don't lose hope. I'm sure we're gonna find him. Damn it. You know what that means? Yeah. Dinner time. Claire, I think you should go. Don't worry about me, Leon. You take care of yourself. Hey, you need to go. Now. Hey, let's get through this. Both of us. 